This is the video for Exercise Science 120 on biomechanical definitions. So in the introduction to this unit, I gave a very brief um, definition of what biomechanics is itself, um, and I encourage you to go and have a, a look at online resources to um, develop more of an understanding of, of really what biomechanics is. Um, I also, before I go into further biomechanics or definitions within biomechanics, I just wanted to outline a couple of the areas that we have um, of focus within biomechanics and exercise science. So if we're leading with the biomechanics of humans, um, sometimes we're interested in the biomechanics of different clinical populations, so their mechanics compared to healthy populations, what puts them at higher risk of um, injury or further damage, um, and maybe what are the underlying coordination factors behind that. Um, the biomechanics of different occupational tasks, so tasks that we do every day for work that we um, may expose us to a greater injury risk, um, as well as the biomechanics of sport. And, and in sport, our mechanics will focus really is with increased performance. So what sort of technique, what sort of mechanics do we employ to increase um, performance, as well as what are the sort of technique um, leads or predisposes us more to injury. So when we're considering the biomechanics of um, human beings, uh, how we move, the mechanics of how we move, there's two forms of the way we evaluate that. So we can qualitatively evaluate that, and that's the description of the quality of the movement. So you may look at someone um, performing a squat, and you may be saying um, that they need to get down more, or they need to bend more, or they've got into the right position, or they haven't bent enough. And so you're really not backing that up with any numbers or any um, quantitative values. So the quality of the movement is qualitative evaluation. Um, if you then support that with um, some numbers or calculation there, so um, you can see on the bottom right that we put a um, measure the angle between two segments in that particular picture, well then that would be a quantitative measure. The 50 degrees there would be quantitative. So really if you're remembering the difference between the two, description of the quality is qualitative and when you're adding numbers you're um, quantifying it and therefore it's quantitative. So when thinking about what type of evaluation we use, why would we use qualitative evaluation in particular circumstances? Well, typically we use that often when quantitative is not practical. So quantitative can be time consuming, um, it can be costly, and so um, in situations where we might be a teacher or a coach, a trainer, even a physiotherapist, where we're looking at mechanics of how someone's moving and offering advice on those mechanics, we can do that without necessarily measuring the numbers. So we might say, okay, you want to turn your trunk a little bit more, you want to bend your knees more, or bend your knees less. So we can often get some of that important information um, from qualitative evaluation in biomechanics. However, there are a number of situations where it's quite advantageous to introduce that quantitative evaluation of someone's mechanics. So you can see here on the bottom right, we're sort of measuring angles over the time in the squat, so we can get a more precise measurement. So accuracy, precision, reliability is an advantage of using quantitative measure. And when I say reliability, I mean we can, um, maybe two people could look at an angle and say, oh, that's about 90 degrees or 80 degrees, or he's traveling about a meter. But um, that becomes very difficult when we start to measure velocity acceleration. It's also different between different people's views, so you or I might sort of look at it and come up with a slightly different number. When we quantitatively measure and assess these mechanics, we can come up with some consistency between raters, um, as well as having that accuracy and precision. It also leads to a better understanding of um, principles. So some of the nuances, some of the things um, that we can't see, often lead us to a better understanding. And we'll talk more about that um, in a moment when it comes to the type of measures. So for example, if you think about the forces that this person on the bottom right is producing um, in the ground as well as through their different joints, you can't really see that um, qualitatively, but we could measure it quantitatively using certain pieces of equipment. So having touched on the types of evaluation, it's important to understand the different types of biomechanical data that we can look at. So um, both of those, both of the types of biomechanical data that we primarily focus on have um, names that we'll be referring to throughout the semester. So kinematics is the description of the motion. Kinetics is the study of the forces that cause the motion. 
So both of those we will focus on. Sometimes we will just focus on kinematics in a particular problem. Sometimes we'll be more focused on the kinetics behind or the forces that cause the motion. And often we'll be dealing with both of those. So both the causes of motion and the motion itself. So what are some examples of kinematics? Well, the position of a person or a segment or an object um, in space, um, when that object moves, the displacement of that object in space, um, this might be in a straight line or it might be um, a rotation, so something might rotate um, 20 degrees around a joint, a segment might rotate um, 20 degrees around a joint, um, velocity, so um, the rate at which it's moving, and acceleration, the rate at which that movement is changing. So we will be dealing with all of those um, in the next coming weeks. Some example of kinetic measurements are force, energy, torque, and power. You can see a picture on the right hand side here of someone walking over a force plate and um, those white lines coming up aren't in that particular frame, they're over the subsequent frames after this one and you can get some information on um, how much force the person is exerting on the ground, the direction of the force and the change in force over time. We'll be talking about kinetics or those things that lead to movement more um, as we go past um, sort of week four or five through the semester. So in biomechanics, it's useful to consider um, the mechanical state of the system that we're dealing with. So if we're dealing with the human system, um, we've got to really consider uh, whether that system is in motion. And when a system is in motion, we call that a dynamic system. And so you can hear, see here, if we're walking, um, we're going through some acceleration. So we might go from a starting position to walking. We're speeding up and slowing down all the time. That's a dynamic state. So when we're, the system that we're analysing is not in a dynamic state, it must be in a static state. Now, a static state is defined as an equilibrium of the system that has no motion or, interestingly, is in constant motion. So it's pretty easy to consider static as still, and primarily when we're dealing with static objects, they are still. And if we consider the um, runner in the blocks, if they're sitting still there, um, that's pretty easy. There's actually um, forces that are being applied to that runner, um, we can see in the blocks. So gravity is pushing that runner towards the ground and they're also pushing up. Similarly, if you're pushing against a wall, um, the wall is pushing back at you with the same force and we'll cover that in kinetics um, with some of Newton's laws of motion. But we can pretty easily consider, easier, easily, sorry, consider those um, as static because we're not moving. Um, so it's equilibrium, there are forces going on, but we're staying still. Now interestingly though, an object that has constant motion, such as an object orbiting a planet, so a satellite or a moon, um, is actually also in a static state. So it's an equilibrium and um, the velocity is actually constant. When we're in constant velocity, um, we're also in a static state. Now for the most of the examples we'll use, that's a bit of a nuance that um, we don't necessarily um, or won't necessarily come up. But it is important to consider that static is not just staying still, it's actually an equilibrium where there's no motion or constant motion. So the last definition I want to outline in this module is the sort of considerations that must come when we are making biomechanical missions. So not what types of data are we going to collect, not just what types of data are we going to collect, but what is actually influencing that data. So two things to bear in mind when we're collecting biomechanical data is the external or ecological validity of the movement of the data that we're collecting, um, as well as the reliability and accuracy of that movement data being obtained. So as with many other forms of data collection with humans, there's often trade-off between these two um, considerations. So if we take our data or collect our biomechanics data in a lab-based environment, we can um, limit those the amount of external factors that influence the task that's required. So we may be able to um, get our um, participants to perform a very specific movement in the lab um, that allows us ease to compare across participant groups, for example, so whether that be in clinical or in sporting research, um, we can limit the amount of external factors. However, that doesn't really represent um, the mechanics necessarily that they may be performing um, outside. So if we collect walking in a lab-based environment um, in a clinical population such as with Parkinson's disease, that may not represent the mechanics that they use in their walking um, in their home, for example. If we take a, um, do a study where we 
collect biomechanical analysis of someone pitching um, in the lab to by baseball pitching, for example, that may not necessarily represent the mechanics they use out in a game situation. If we collect in a game situation, that can often um, allow us to increase, or the advantage is the increased external validity. However, unfortunately, we can't use um, some of our equipment. So video analysis might be very difficult to position the camera in the right way. There might be other equipment like force plates we can't embed um, in a field-based competition. And similarly with clinical research, we can't necessarily use the best equipment in someone's home. Um, there are more and more trade-offs. In a sporting example, we might use training um, or field-based training as a particular trade-off of that. Um, in clinical environments, we may use um, uh, software or uh, hardware, sort of different tools like Microsoft Connect to look at people's um, biomechanics um, whilst they're at home. These may not be ideal um, for the accuracy of our systems, but certainly our potential um, is increasing in this area. So there's a trade-off, but it's important to consider both the external validity of the mechanics that you're analysing as well as the accuracy of um, what you are collecting. So while certainly not comprehensive, um, this video has hopefully outlined some of the um, very basic biomechanical definitions we have and will be important um, to cover the further concepts we'll continue in future weeks. That's the end of this module on biomechanical definitions.